Hello, this is Benjamin with ARI, your website company. And the point of this video will be to illustrate all of the basic things that you need to do to get your new e-commerce integration up and running. Now, once you've logged into your CMS editor, you're going to land here on the dashboard of the editor. Now, even though the wording is slightly confusing, you want to go to your e-commerce integration dashboard. To get to that, you'll go into your left-hand menu, hover your mouse over configuration, and then go all the way down to the second to left last option, e-commerce. This will land you eventually on the e-commerce integration dashboard. Now on the e-commerce integration dashboard, once your site is up and running and you have your store open and begin selling things, this will give you statistics such as how many things have been sold versus how many things have been shipped and a lot more very much specific statistics related to that. For today, we're going to start off with the basic setup. To do that, we'll go up in our upper right hand corner and click on settings. Underneath settings, we'll go into general and account settings. Now, for the most part, the boxes that we see in this next section of the e-commerce integration area, these boxes should be filled in for you already. Essentially, what you're jumping in here to do is to make sure that they are filled in correctly. After you get done with each box, you will want to save Click on the name of your business and run that publish changes after each one. That way, if you happen to navigate away to some other option within this e-commerce integration, uh, when you get back, that progress that you typed in, the new information you entered hasn't disappeared. The primary contact information box is primarily used by us. Uh, if we do get a question from your business and we're not able to identify which one of your staff sent it, we are going to send an answer back to whoever is in this primary contact information. Account holder name, uh, this would be the individual that you choose at your business that is going to be responsible for handling all e-commerce dealings on your site. Their business email, their direct phone number, the store name. The store name should be typed in here with the same spacing, punctuation, uh, case matching as to the name that you have on the home page of your website. Sto store logo uh, URL. Now, why are you typing in this? Uh, excuse me, why are you entering this? What is it for? What does it do? Well, on the home page of your website, you'll have a logo very similar to this green ARI logo that you see up here. To get this specific URL just for your logo, you'll right click on it and go down to open image in new tab. This will open up a specific URL just for uh, this particular logo. You'll then click, highlight, right click, and choose to copy that URL. Go back to our editor and paste that specific URL in there. Now, why are we doing this? Well, the reason we're doing this is, is that anything, any media that gets sent out digitally uh, from this program or is a physical copy, whether it is going to your customer, to a distributor, uh, to a, another company, it will have your particular logo and name of business in the upper left-hand corner of that distributed media. So it looks more official. With store domain, on the homepage of your site, there will be a link that's uh, in the primary navigation that says something to the effect of shop online, shop accessories, shop parts and accessories, something to that effect. You'll click on that link on the very first landing page where you have a list of every piece of part, clothing, and accessory that you sell on your site listed. You will go ahead and copy and paste that URL similar to the process that we did for the store logo up above. When you're done with this, do not forget to save and publish. Dealer identification. Now, what this is for is you obviously want to have full catalogs on your site for different distributors, uh, having their particular parts, clothing, and accessories with all of their pictures, information, and pricing available for purchase. 
What you're going to do here is go through this list until you see a distributor that you know you want to have that product information on your site. Click into that field. What you're going to be typing into here is the account number that you would use as if you were ordering goods for your business from that distributor, your official associated account number. Go through the rest of this very long list and do that for all of the different distributors that you want to have uh, on your site. Then once again, you will go down to the bottom and save and publish. Now it used to be when this program first started that once you saved and published, the catalogs that you put on or took off, uh, the information would update on the site immediately. As of about four and a half weeks ago, that is no longer accurate. If you go to change uh, the distributors that you have on the site, make sure that you're sending an email to either your implementation specialist if your site is not live. And if your site is live, after you've changed this information, send an email to your account manager so that we can perform an update in the background to ensure the information that you just changed is being accurately displayed on your site. Next, we're going to go up to settings once again. And we're going to go into the, and set up the section that allows people to add stuff to the cart, check out, and pay for the items that they want. For this, we'll go into settings once again. This time, we're going to go into integration settings and into web store. Once again, as with the last uh, set of settings, uh, this should already be at least partially filled in, if not all filled in for you already. But as I've already explained, it's a really good idea to go in and double check. So store name, again, this should be the same store name as it's printed on the home page of your site. The email you would like uh, customers to reach out to should they have a question. If you have services on your site or other lead forms such as request a quote uh, or a basic contact form, you want to put in the email here that you want those filled out forms to be directed to. Customer service telephone obviously is the phone number you'd want your customer to reach out should they have a question. Your physical address uh, from which you will be shipping these packages out from. And then we have these three settings, which are very similar in their functionality, but there are small differences. So I'll do my best today to go through and explain it carefully. Hide prices. This will do two things. First, when you check on the box, it will hide the prices for all of the items that you currently have on the site. Then it will make the store non-transactional. And instead of the button next to each item saying buy now, or add to cart, it will switch over to request quote, effectively making your site a non-transactional store. Customers are not able to add things to the cart. Non-transactional store. This makes it so people can't add things to the cart, but the pricing information, the pictures of the product, and everything else is still displaying. However, it will change that add to cart or buy now button to request quote. These are good options if you're temporarily having issues with one or multiple distributors and you simply don't want to uh, deal with the headache of, okay, this distributor is working, but this one is not, so on and so forth. That can happen occasionally. Coming soon. If you have a close relationship with one or more of your distributors, at some point they may ask you to put an item on your site uh, that is not yet available to the public, but will be soon, and is essentially asking you to generate excitement or hype about that product. Well, after you enter in the product, it will ask you to enter in a price. Well, this is not yet for sale. So if you check this box in the pricing field, essentially you can type in coming soon instead. We'll scroll down. Shipping and taxes. Origin country, it'll either be the USA or Canada. Uh, we do have plans to expand this platform to other countries as well, but I have not been given a date by which that will happen. State or province, and of course your zip code of where your store in which you're going to physically ship these items out 
Nexus states you won't have to worry about at this time. In-store pickup. You have three options, either completely disabled, you will not allow it in any form. For items that in the system, you type in the shelf quantity of that particular product, or simply on every item. Now, whether you choose uh, shelf quantities only or all orders, it does enable your customer to do two different things. This allows your customers to do both order something on the site and pay for it on the site and then come pick it up in store. But it also allows them to, they can order it online and simply pay for it when they pick it up. So when going through and enabling this option, think about it carefully. Allow for back orders. If you do decide to allow for back orders, just make sure that you know this, and this is in the fine print that you see down below. If an order is not looked at or in any way processed on midnight of the 10th day, it will effectively be canceled and the customer's form of payment will be refunded. Disable out-of-state orders. This can be used in two different ways. If you are simply a small business that doesn't think you can keep up uh, with orders both in your state and out of state, you can go through and temporarily disable this, as well as you just simply think that you're gonna get flooded with orders. So initially you turn off out of state orders to you can see what the flow of orders looks like and know if you'll be able to keep up. Shipping rules, we'll click on manage shipping rules. There are two things that we'll have to set up here. Just so that you're aware, do not start with Manage shipping settings, start with manage, excuse me, web store shipping rules. We'll go to the right of where it says United States and click on the three dots that we see here. Underneath actions, we'll go to price banded shipping rates. Now, if you've worked with our previous uh, e-commerce system or you've worked with any other online e-commerce system and have set up shipping rates, you most likely at some point have seen one of these. Essentially what this is doing is setting up shipping banded rates based on the total cost of the order before tax and shipping is calculated. In other words, as an example, zero through $25 might get charged $12.50 for shipping. 25, uh, $25.01 through 50 might get charged $14 or something like that. As far as this goes, I, three, I see three main camps as far as the decision that's made here. The first individuals will contact their formal payment gateway and say, what is the largest dollar amount order that you will legally process on our site? And then they'll go through and use 10, 20, 25 or $50 increments and go all the way up to that very high number. The second camp of individuals will go through and go up to 200 or 250 uh, using those same increments, after which they'll make free shipping. And then of course, if you don't put anything at all in here, in other words, everything is zeroed out, then it means that it is essentially free shipping across the board. Now, at this point, you may be saying, well, Ben, don't you have some type of system in place that based on the order, it'll get me live up-to-date rates uh, from local shippers in my area uh, based on size and weight and amount of time that that package will be delivered in? Well, if it was about a month and a half ago, I would have said, no, this is your only option. But as of about a month and a half ago, we do have a second option. Now, once this refreshes, we'll go into web store shipping settings. To the right of shipping is not configured, we'll go into shipping settings. Now, before I get into all of my statements about setting up an easy post account, just know that as of right now, the only industries that this is going to work for and actually have those predicted rates is for anyone that is in the power sports industry. If you are in marine, medical, OPE, or any of our other industries that which we serve, 
this will currently not work for you and you will have to do it based on those bracketed prices that we just covered. But if you're listening and you're part of the power sports designation or industry, you would click on here, go set up your account with Easy Post. After you've made the account, you would log in, go to your settings, gather this API key, copy and paste it into here and hit save. Then upon receiving your first order, you would get the option to log into your Easy Post and simply pick the shipping that you want to go with. Depending on the level of integration and the price that you want to pay, there is an option in which you can print prepaid shipping and essentially weigh the package yourself and input the weight at your place of business and stick on the pre-printed label and either have it delivered to the locust, the local UPS or FedEx office or simply schedule a pickup from them, depending on the level of easy post you set up. Now, one more caution. For 99% of the items that we have in our Power Sports catalogs, we were provided the weight and dimensions of the items. For any item that we don't have the weight and dimensions for, it will default to that bracketed shipping that we set up just a few moments ago. So even if you're going with Easy Post, still set up those bracketed shipping just in case it was one item that we didn't get that information for from the distributor, AKA the manufacturer. Uh, moving right along, let's go back one page and let's keep on scrolling down. Social media, if you have dedicated social media for your business, make sure to put in those specific URLs here. If you do want to have that social media uh, listed within the header and footer of every e-commerce page on your site. Analytics and tracking. If you have a Google Analytics account or what can also be called a Google Console uh, platform sign up, you can set up large tracking campaigns of customer activity such as how many people have clicked on a certain link, how many times has a certain page been viewed. They can get very specific. The idea is, is once you've set up this campaign in your Google Analytics account, it will output a UA code. You can copy and paste that into here and hit save, and it will start tracking those things even before your site goes live. So if you do want to go through and manually test that all of those triggers you put into the complex campaign you just set up work, you can do that. As far as payment gateway, you have two options with us. You can go with a business PayPal, or you can go with one of our formal payment gateways, or use them in both in the same combination. If you want to go with the formal payment gateway, the three options that we have available for you are Stripe, Authorize.net, and Mercury Pay. Now, something you may be asking is, well, I have a gateway provider from my old site. Can I use that? It is not one of those. The answer is no. As of right now, these are the only three that we accept. Next, let's talk about inventory rules. We'll scroll up once again. We're going to go into settings. Once we get into settings, we're going to go to the aftermarket catalog section and into inventory rules. Now, these would have been predetermined agreements that you have with your distributors. Now, in order to better explain this, I'm just going to pick one brand uh, to use as our example. For today, let's go with Castle. As of right now, with the way this chart is set up, any order up to the $100 amount, the people at this place of business would be responsible for shipping out. Any order above that $100 amount would get shipped off to the nearest Castle distribution center to that customer's address. Now, obviously you can raise or lower this amount based on the agreement that you already have uh, when you signed that contract with that distributor. If you are one of those shops that are like, you know what, we don't trust the people at the Castle Distribution Center uh, to actually get the correct goods and ship them out on time. We would like to provide a uh, hand pack up all of those orders and send them out to the customers ourselves. If you'd like to do that, simply go through and check off the exclude. 
then you will be on the hook for every order, no matter what dollar amount, from that particular distributor. Whether you're going to use a distributor or pack up the items and ship them out yourself, one thing that I do urge you to do is get an updated lead time. Average out your lead time between all of the different shippers that you use. And that means if you're going to use your distributors for some orders and yourself for others, make sure that you contact all of those different shipping companies and get an average time by which things will be shipped out and update this. Next, let's talk about brand exclusions. For this, we'll go up to Web Store and underneath Catalog Management, we'll go to Brand Exclusions. Now, what is this for? What does it do? Why are we here? Well, let's say that you're having trouble with a major distributor like Western Power Sports, and temporarily you want to take all items from that distributor off the site as well as any advertising for those products off the site. You would type in Western Power Sports here, hit the plus, and it would add a rule in just like I did for 509. And while that rule is here, until you go over and hit this red trash can, deleting the rule, saving, and publishing, all of the products from that particular distributor would stay off your site as well as any advertising for that distributor. Now, this not only works for large distributors, but it also works for sub-distributors. Underneath Western Power Sports, they have several brands or sub-distributors that you could do this for as well, such as Alpine Star, 509, FXR, all of those. You can also do those individually if you want as well. Next, let's talk about price changes. Now, there are three ways in which you can make price changes in our system. You can do it one by one. You can do an entire brand at a time using an Excel spreadsheet, or you can go through and use what we call pricing rules to change all of the product pricing across the entire brand by a set dollar amount or percentage. Let's start with the small change and work our way up to the larger ones. We'll start with individual. We'll go into catalogs and go into search aftermarket. Now, obviously, over to the left, once this loads, there's going to be lots of filters by which you can narrow down to the specific brand, product type, category, whatever it may be that you're looking for. But in order to make this easier to teach and to retain the information, we're just going to use the product right up top. We're going to go ahead and click on the MPN or manufacturer's part number. This brings up the MPN data sheet for that product. Now, other than the price, there's a lot of other information you can change while you're here as well. First up would be the image. If you're not happy with the image, you have two options. You can either upload a file, maybe of one of your employees wearing the glove, or you can upload a URL from a manufacturer site that you feel captures the uh, glove or other product better. One advantage you do have if you do go through the upload URL process, if that particular company decides to update that image halfway or three quarters of the way through the sales quarter, that update would carry over to your site as well. Next, you have the family description talking about all of the gloves that are within uh, this same brand and general product description. And then you have the variant description talking about this specific size and color. You can change details in both. Now there's two different types of price changes you can do. There is a flat price change, which you would do underneath the price overrides section that you see here. Or there is the sales price change, which you can do in the shelf quantities area down here. Now, Let's say you got a really good deal on these gloves from the distributor and you're able to sell them on the site for $20 instead of $24.50. Sure, type in your $20 here. And if I was to hit save, it would overwrite this price on the site for $20. However, unless you told your customer otherwise, they would never know that that wasn't MSRP. So if you're like, you know what, that's great and all, but I want my customer to know that it's on sale, sure. Go down to shelf quantities. 
If I was to type in $20 here, the difference in how it would display on the items listing on your site would be it would have the original $24.50 listed, have it crossed out, in large bold print would be the $20. It would say, you saved this much over MSRP, and it would say you have this act to, this long to act on this amazing deal. We'll jump back out of there. Next would be a bulk change. A majority of the bulk changes that you can do to the data in the system is going to be done through the file center. So let's jump in there. Once we get into the file center, the specific file that we're going to look at is underneath price overrides and client import price overrides. This will bring up a CSV, Excel spreadsheet, template by which you are going to input your information into and then upload. Let's go ahead and take a look at that template. We'll open that up. And just so we can see what's going on, we'll go ahead and expand all of our columns. There we are. Now, in this case, the catalog name would be 100%. The source name would be 100% Youth Gloves Orange, size XL. The part number would be the manufacturer's part number, and then the price you'd override it for would be $20. Now, this particular sheet is pretty easy to fill out. Uh, it's not very complex but you will be using um, other templates to do more difficult uh, and more complicated things on the site as well, such as adding in your own private uh, custom catalogs of products into this system. That is why no matter what template you're working with, I would always urge you to look at the notes before you start. Uh, the reason being is occasionally our buddy Tad uh, internally who made all these templates will include not only really good notes about how these are supposed to be formatted, but occasionally he will sneak in a clickable link that will lead you to a step-by-step -step video or article on how to fill this out one thing at a time. We'll jump back out of here. And of course, once you're done filling out that sheet, save it someplace easy to find like your desktop, click on browse, go find that file, and then hit submit. If you are new to this, I would suggest putting in your business email to receive a notification when it's done. Not only does this send you an automated email telling you that the particular process is done, but it also gives you a full report on how the process went. There are three different statuses uh, that you can see uh, back here. You have completed, which means that every product that you put in there uh, is access, uh, successfully within uh, this editor as well as on your site with all of the updated information. And you can now feel free to jump onto the site and check out that updated info. Complete with warnings means that one or multiple of the part numbers you put in uh, were not formatted uh, correctly. So you'll need to go back, fix those ones that were incorrect, and re-upload them. Unlike our previous system, one advantage you have with this new one is you no longer have to upload the entire file again. You can just take the ones that errored, fix just those, put it in a sheet and upload only the ones that errored, which of course saves you time. And then of course failed means the entire sheet was formatted wrong and you will have to start again from scratch. Next, we'll talk about the third way in which you can change prices on the site. We'll go into settings once again, and then underneath aftermarket catalog, we'll go into pricing rules. Pricing rules, you can change uh, the price across an entire brand by a set percentage. I wanted to take 20% off all of the Alpine Star that we had uh, across the entire board, so I called the name of this particular uh, pricing rule Alpine 20. I targeted the MSRP. And then for the web store pricing, I took off 20%. Now, as soon as I save and publish, it goes onto the site and pulls 20% off the MSRP across that entire brand. And that's pretty much it. You can have as many of these pricing rules as you want. Uh, just make sure that they do not overlap. And when filling this out, there is a couple of tricks that you need to know. Let's go through it. We'll click on new rule. All right, name, let's call this FXR, and let's go with 15. Targeting, you can target either the MSRP or the cost. Uh, 
you, the MSRP will be in the system by default for all of the distributor catalogs that we have. The cost you will have to upload using a CSV file in the pricing center beforehand if you want to go through and target the costs instead. Round price is up or round price is down. Uh, nearest to the uh, nearest dollar, I believe it is, you can choose if the percentage is close to rounding up or rounding down in the calculation. Uh, you can choose which you want to do. Now, we have eBay value, Amazon value, Walmart value, and web store value. Now, theoretically, could you use this to change the prices on these different stores that you see here? Yes, if they were linked into the system, you most definitely could use pricing rules to change the price. But as of right now for this demonstration site, uh, there is none of those stores connected to it. So for all of these except for web store value, we're going to go in and put in a zero. And then for the web store value, we're going to put in a minus 15. Manufacturer that we'd like to target, let's go with F, X, R, and there's FXR Racing. Wonderful. We'll select it and we'll hit submit. And now we can see that FXR 15 targets the MSRP, takes minus 15% off. One thing that I did forget to say is the actual name that you give this rule never actually displays on the site. Uh, so you don't have to worry about your customers seeing that if you just happen to give it a name that may not make sense to your average customer. The next thing that we'll cover is coupons. For this, we'll go into Web Store, and underneath Marketing and Promotions, we'll go to Coupons. Now, there's only two different types of coupons that you can do. A percentage off of their order total before taxes and shipping uh, is calculated, or free shipping after a certain dollar amount. Um, a good example of just a regular percentage off would be over the holiday sales of Christmas uh, holiday uh, season, rather. I created a sale called Holiday Sale that was a 10% off their order. The code that I generated for customers to type in was HS10. If they type that in on the order, they would get 10% off their entire order. Now, one thing that's not stated here that I really want them to create a paragraph stating is the actual code that you generate there is no limitations on the amount of characters special characters uh, numbers uppercase lowercase any of that the only thing that you really have to know is if you were to type in hs10 with a capital hs if someone on the site typed it in a lower case hs10 the system would still accept it meaning that it's not case sensitive. Next, uh, let's jump into Lightspeed integration. If you know what Lightspeed is and you know that you want to integrate it with this program, you're going to go all the way over to the right to settings once again, but this time you're going to go all the way down to the bottom to the bottom section that says module settings and click on Lightspeed. Now, web orders module. If you want any order that's placed on this site to be sent over to the e-commerce section of your Lightspeed and to manage the order from your Lightspeed rather than the built-in interface that you see in this system, click on Enable Web Order Module, type in your Lightspeed username and password and hit Save. 3PA Data Warehouse. Let's say that you already have quantities in your Lightspeed system, not only for your store, but also quantities that are automatically updated of how many items are left at the distribution warehouse. You've set up sales and coupons uh, in your Lightspeed system, and then rather than retyping them in in the system, you simply want all of that information to be copied over to here. Well, enable Lightspeed 3PA Data Warehouse, type in your 3PA dealer ID, and save. Now, if you're not going to be using uh, Lightspeed to process orders, then you would be using the interface here within PSS. That looks like this. You'd go into orders, and underneath order management, there's only one button, one option, order lookup. That's pretty easy. Now, luckily, I have some really great coworkers. 
And when I asked them to generate some example orders for the system, they generated about 62 orders for me by the next day, which is awesome. Now, looking at this in the background, your e-commerce uh, integration, if you've ever any ordered anything specifically on eBay, the interface looks really similar. Here's where all of your information is at a glance. Pretty simple. If this particular icon is green, the action has been done. If it is gray, it has not. So, has the item been paid for? Yes. Has the packing slip been printed to put in the package? Yes. Has this um, order been captured by a third-party shipping software? No. Has this particular order been uh, exported to uh, Lightspeed or saved on someone's personal flash drive? No. Has the item been shipped out? Yes. Now, one of the things that you can't do in our system as of yet, and it's a tiny bit of a disadvantage, I'm not going to lie or sugarcoat it, is if a customer places an order and they say, hey, can you add these items off the order or take off that item off the order or modify it anyway, you'll simply have to go in here, cancel the order, and have them put in a brand new order. That's really the only thing that you can do. The two options that you do have are manage and edit. We'll first click on manage. Now what this is going to be good for is if you, guy, if you have a guy in the back room that is going to be picking this part from your stock room and shipping it out, it does give them some order. Uh, it gives them the uh, generated ID for the order so they can look it up in the system, write it down, what have you. Now, if they're looking at this particular item in the picture here and they're like, you know what? I see that there's a description. I see the picture, but I still don't know what the heck this is. You can click on here and it will take you to the listing on the site, which occasionally will be uh, more helpful in identifying the item. Then you have edit. For the person that's in charge of e-commerce orders uh, at your location, this can be handy. They can go in and change the status of the order as it goes through uh, the processing. That way, if anybody else on your team jumps in here, they know exactly what status that order is at. And when you do get that item shipped, you can put in the tracking number here and click on Notify Buyer. Uh, this will send them an automated email that will say something to the effect of, your package is on its way. It's going to be um, there estimated at your doorstep um, at this many days. And to view detailed tracking information, click on the link below. Something like that. We'll jump back to the dashboard of our e-commerce integration. And that's pretty much all I have for you. Until I talk to all of you again, thank you very much for your very valuable time uh, in watching this video. And remember, don't forget to check out all of my trainings that I have uh, in the Help Center as well on other topics. Uh, I get great feedback on them on daily saying how helpful they are and how useful they are. Until I talk to you all again, have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye.